Hello, it is 5 p.m. and I am going home. I'm walking home. The um, <laughs> I'm so glad I live really close to my work because the traffic yesterday was outrageous. It took an hour to get out of the car park yesterday. The weather was so awful. The wind was really awful. So everyone drives in and then everyone's shocked when everyone can't get back out again. <laughs> There's only one exit, so... Um, yeah. So um, I just finished listening to an audiobook. Um, thank you so much for all your recommendations on Vlogmas Day 6, I think. Uh, maybe 7. Um, that's going to be super helpful because I've just finished my most recent one, which was about... It was Adam K. Um, the night shift before Christmas <laughs> and it was all about working in a hospital his experiences working in a hospital at Christmas six Christmases in a row I've done I've done five Christmases in a row before no 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 eight 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 Christmases in a row once but that was when I was a student and I needed to work the holidays um, it has been three years since I've worked Christmas, so it's kind of my time to work Christmas this uh, this time round. So um, I don't mind working it this time. It's a really funny book. Uh, it's really meaningful and a bit um, maybe a bit triggering. He works in um, neonatal kind of obs and gynae, so if there is a mention of a um, a loss of pregnancy in it so don't watch don't if you're if you're sensitive to that or if that's something that um, uh, has affected you in uh, a sad way it is uh, not advisable but um, he does treat it quite in a really lovely way um yeah I really enjoy uh, listening to him I like I like like I don't know why I I, I live it I work it why do I like listening to it as well? I think I just love it because it's so irreverent. He's so just, oh, he's so funny about it. And it's so relatable, but anyway. Um, I am making some pasta, a load of green stuff, spinach, a half pack of spinach, and then frozen spinach as well. Peas for protein. Um, onion, garlic, leek. Bit of leek in there in the the dark leafy leafy part of the of the leek, and then some of this. This is my favorite vegan cheese. It's the uh, Tesco free from mature cheddar. It's delicious, according to me. And some linguini, 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 kitten. I've taken you down off of that. You're not allowed to be there. I know you're trying to, um, you know, camouflage yourself. See, Toast can camouflage herself. She's trying to, but failing. No, you're not allowed over near the food. You're just not allowed. Gosh. Look at those muddy, no, muddy paw prints. Whose fault is that? Ugh. We should get the tiny kitten detective out. Hello, Toasty. My little toasty pups. Hmm? What's in there? Oh, what's down here? So cute. So, in accordance with the advent calendar rules, today is the tenth of December. So, what day? 21, 12, so I can't see. <laughs> 23, 19, 14, 20, 18, 22, 8. Okay, I could have 8. Oh, and there's 10. Oh, wild apple and cinnamon. Oh, I'm definitely having 10. Okay. Um, this is, no, oh, and we're on 9. I can have 9 as well. 13, 16, 18, 11, okay, 11 is tomorrow, original chai. Okay, thanks Bernadine. And James, if you're watching, so I can have a choice of these three. I'm not super fond of cinnamon, so I might just go for this, because actually this is cinnamon as well, but that's three types of cinnamons. Hmm. I want this one. I'm having it.
So it's time for the answers part of the Q and answers. Um, I have Toast sleeping beside me. She's so cute, but also quiet. So I'm gonna keep her sleeping beside me. So I've got my little notebook here by Badly Made Books, a company down in Cork. They make books badly. They made badly made books. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's 85% rubbish. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I got loads of questions from my questions and answers um, call out copying Zoe of the pins and needles of Logmas, which who what which is really good. She's she's really good. You all should go watch her. She's good. Um so I've split it into one for crafts, one for my work, because everyone wants to know what I do <laughs> and where I do it. Stop stalking me. Are you all trying to hunt me down and get me sacked <laughs> for filming and work? <laughs> um and then uh, some things, uh, some stuff about James and then some personal stuff uh, about like food and stuff. But uh, yeah, so we'll talk first about the craft ones. So Rick Rack asked me if I could only do one craft for a month, what would it be? I actually think I might die if I could only do one thing for a month. It probably would be knitting because maybe I would make a dent in that bloody stash. <laughs> I love having the option of doing loads of different crafts though. So yeah. And then she also asked, what is the craft I'd like to try? I would really like to get into tapestry weaving. I'd really like, I've got a couple of art yarns and I've got a tapestry loom in my garage, a big one. Um, I need to clean it up and fix it up and try and do something with it. And that is my next battle. <laughs> so yeah, tapestry weaving. Um, there's some absolutely gorgeous Instagram accounts, some fabulous artists on a line that I'm so jealous. Um, Puddle Glum asked me about, uh, does she have, do you have any tips on weaving linen on a rigid head loom? Now I did weave a linen scarf. It was a rainbow scarf and it was a beautiful set of linen minis from um, Midwinter Yarns and it was Lithuanian linen and it was gorgeous. However, it was a bit tricky to um, weave with because the warp was very stiff and the, it would lose tension over time. Uh, or not over time, like even in, in like with, between one up so you had to the trick that I that, that they told me was to spray it with water actually get a spray gun and spray it with water as you were doing it so yeah I had to like weave with a towel and and spray it and make sure the warp was damp when I was weaving with it and it turned out much better than after that um it was a much easier process process to engage with then so um make sure your warp is wet while you're weaving with it and it'll be much easier for you I think what in future, I don't think I'm going to weave with a warp of linen. I would weave with a weft of linen. So just in case you don't know the weaving terms, I happen to have a handy loom right here. Yeah. This is the 16 inch rigid head loom. And I, sorry. So the warp is the up and down threads and the weft is across. So in future, I would definitely be doing, at the moment I have 100% silk on this. Now it's it's quite a fluffy um, a fluffy silk. Um, it's called Airy Silk from Wesart. And um, that is on this loom at the moment. I'm aiming to get this done by Sunday, but I'm not gonna cut it off because I'm actually gonna cut off this loom, this warp on Sunday at This Is Knit um, as a demonstration on how to finish uh, you're weaving. Um, I'm kind of doing the class backwards. <laughs> so you'll see a warp coming off and then you'll get weaving. And then um, I'll be, while you're weaving, I'm gonna show you how to rewarp this. And there's a really interesting um, charity event that myself and, is a collaboration between myself and the This Is Knit team um, and Townhouse Yarns. Townhouse Yarns has dyed up a beautiful kind of um, a, a beautiful set of yarn for um, 
that I'm going to be warping during the class and then the scarf that's going to be made from the class is going to be auctioned off for a charity um, and it's homelessness charities in both Dublin and Limerick. So um, yeah, we're really excited about that and w how you can enter into the raffle is to pop into the shop and have a go and weave a few lines on or loads of lines on the scarf and um, have a try of the loom see if you like it have it go with the color play we I still haven't decided what if I'm going to put the colors so she's dyed at this beautiful variegated warp and this beautiful variegated uh, and this beautiful solid um, weft but I can't I don't know if I'm going to do opposite can't decide it's going to be beautiful whatever it is so um yeah so we are going to put that together it's going to be really exciting anyway yes so with linen you'd want to wet the warp all the time and you also want to wet this before it goes on here because the wetter the more you use linen the uh, the softer it gets but it is when you first start using it it is a bit wiry um but then it just gets more and more beautiful over time eh there you go now that's that so the uppy downy bits are the warp and the crossy bits is the weft. There you go. Such advanced technology. And then in one of the videos that I was doing, I was doing, um, someone asked what kind of knitting I was doing and do I always purl like that? Um, and I was doing a Portuguese purl or Portuguese knitting where the yarn was going around my neck and I had a tensioned in this hand, but I was actually flicking it with my thumb in this hand so that's the portuguese pearl and i love it for purling if there's long rows i will generally get sick of purling with the right hand with my in the english style and i switch over to portuguese purling on the long rows because i hate purling so much but portuguese purling is way easier way way easier but portuguese knitting is knit stitch is hard um so i just switched between the two it doesn't bother me so now we'll move on to um, my work. Uh, loads of people asked me what what was my job. Um, so who asked? Tina Arnold asked, and Deborah Sagner and um, Amanda Leahy, who's obviously been listening. <laughs> asked why did I choose to be a radiographer and that's my job I'm a radiographer I take x-rays I take I do uh, perform CT scans I work in theatre I work in the cath lab and I also work training students um, for uh, the job as well so why did I choose to be a radiographer I worked in the hospital as a care attendant for during the summers during holidays and weekends um, during my degree in art college and then I um, the recession came along and all the funding for all the arts things that I wanted to do dried up like overnight and it was terrifying um, and then I decided to instead of coming out and trying to find a job or something um, when I didn't really know what I wanted to do and I didn't really know, think I was good enough to do anything because they don't teach you business in art college, which is an absolute crime. It's disgusting. If you're doing an art degree, do a little bit of business on a night shift or something. Do an extra business course. You need it. It's okay. Just do it. You're not selling yourself out. You're helping yourself succeed. Oh, I wish someone had told me that. But anyway... Whatever. Um, yeah, so I um, I was working in the hospital at the time as a care attendant and I thought that radiography was really interesting. Uh, there was loads of technology and imaging. Uh, it was very visual and um, you dealt, I dealt with people and it wasn't as such a, like I, I was a care attendant, which is very nursing oriented. And you get, I get kind of, I don't know, it's really hard work. Like anyone who's a nurse, I really admire because I just couldn't do it. I couldn't hack it. I was a care attendant for eight years, only part time. And I was like, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm done with this minding someone for 12 hours straight. It's a long time. So, um, yeah, I could mind someone for 10 minutes in and out appointments, you know, very nice. Um, and also you're helping them on their journey as well. It's really nice, kind of satisfying kind of short, satisfying kind of um, appointments or 
situations, which is really nice. I don't know, it keeps the day fresh as well. Every day is new, every day is different. Every patient is new, every patient is different, like every 10 minutes. You can, you can deal with anything. It's kind of like Kimmy Schmidt. You know, you can deal with anything for 10 seconds. So anything really difficult. Say if a, a patient is coming in from A&E and they're coming up, they've been attacked by a bull or they've been thrown out of a car or something, you can deal with it because you're part of the team, but it is only for like 10 minutes, you know? So you're like, I can just, I can do this and I can help this person as much as possible. And then that's as much as I can give. And then that's my role. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That's why I chose to be a radiographer. Um, and it was a really nice mix between science and kind of creativity as well, because you do have to think outside, how am I gonna get this image that needs to be perfect on a patient who's really in a lot of pain or aggressive or drunk or, you know, you've got to really use a lot of creativity to convince them and also adjust around the patient's needs. Um, you know, if they don't understand, say if they've got dementia, or they're confused how you can try and do it. So, um, I do enjoy it. It is really intense work. And someone did ask how, how I managed to do such long shifts and their laws against it. <laughs> so I did a shift, uh, where I worked a normal day and then I did an on-call night shift. Now it's not a shift, uh, system, you know, it's not a 24 hour shift. You are working a, a eight hour day and then you are doing an on-call shift after that. It starts at eight. So you've got a gap of three hours between, but it's not technically a shift, you know, where you're on all night, you know what I mean? It's an on-call shift. So I have time to downtime between patients, um, but it is a very, very busy shift. And um, yeah, I don't really want to go to the shift system. Um, I, yeah, we, we work really well with it. We only do one or two of those like a month and um yeah we get time off afterwards and you get um well compensated so we don't want to i don't want to go to the shift system mm -mm. Mm -mm. don't want that i worked in it for a long time and yeah couldn't couldn't do it you know no you like nah i don't know it just wasn't for me i prefer this system i don't mind working it but yeah it's um it's not a um a proper shift it's an on-call shift so you're you're on your phone and you're you've you've got um, what you need so um and then oh some Stacy uh, the shoeless monk asked did I find my badge yes I found my badge it was very embarrassing that's why I didn't say it it was in my bag the whole time <laughs> um what else then uh, oh, someone asked, uh, Jennifer Oren asked uh, if I'd ever go into animal radiography. Um, I don't think there is a, a place big enough in Ireland for me to hire a, a radiographer full time. Um, I, there's not much career progression. <laughs> and also, I think in most big animal centers, the nurses and the vets do the actual radiography. Uh, there is a big equine place. I'd have to move to England and I don't want to do that for various reasons. Brexit. Um, how? Do, 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 do. Yeah, OK. So then. Oh, Becky Wright asked a really interesting question. She asked if I had any hospital ghost stories. And yes, yes, I do. So, it was a dark and stormy night shift. Uh, it actually was, and it was in the old uh, hospital. It's all been redone now, but this was years ago. Um, I was in the HDU and it, it, the HDU was at literally a tiny room with five beds and it was tiny. Um, there was five nurses and me, a care attendant, and one of the one of the beds, uh, a patient had just moved out. They had just been moved to the hospice, the local hospice. They were very ill, and they were kind of palliative care. Um, anyway, they they uh, the bed was empty for the night, and um, at about two a.m., the monitor just suddenly came to life, beep beeped, and then flatlined. We were all like what 
and the monitor shut down then again it was it was probably only like a second but everyone was like you saw that right yeah what was that what was that and we're like oh it's probably just the glitch you know things are always beeping it's fine you know everything's beeping all night but this was kind of just a particularly quiet moment it was about 2 204 a.m i think i remember anyway the next night i came in and they were like grace i was like what uh they were like so bed four, bed four or bed two or whatever it was bed two um she passed away yesterday morning and i was like oh what time 204 a.m i'm not kidding that happened boom ghosts in the machine baby (laughs) um but yeah very sad but um yeah there's lots of kind of superstitions that lots of different hospitals used to have, um, but there a lot of them. Most of them are very morbid, so I won't talk about them. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> um, so then there was a couple of other personal questions. Um, what was the significance behind this um, necklace? I wear it all the time. I bought this for myself um, when I finished the uh, 500 mile, 800 kilometer trek across northern Spain, known as El Camino de, Camino de Santiago. Uh, it's the Camino de Santiago, and it is the pilgrimage across northern Spain from uh, the Pyrenees to Santiago de Compostela. And I went out to Fisterra to Finisterre and um, yeah it's uh, it was a big deal I did it on my in my final third year a fourth year yeah, after I finished all my exams I was waiting for my results uh, in radiography and I went out and I did it on my own I had started it the year before with my family but I really wanted to do it on my own and it changed my entire life just boom <laughs> I stopped wearing makeup because uh, I couldn't carry it I stopped worrying about so much stuff in my life and now I've gathered all the rest of my stuff (laughs) I've gathered so much stuff again but I became really minimal and I became just more open and more confident in myself like I knew I could if I can walk 500 500 miles across northern Spain on my own in a different language I can pretty much do anything so and that was the first time I actually started filming myself actually that was the first time I started doing vlogs Um, I just posted them on Facebook to my friends on Facebook and it was really lovely uh, because I was on my own and sure when no one's around you might as well film yourself and tell people that you're alive and I wasn't very good at writing I tried writing a blog I do have a blog actually I think it's called Camino Babbles and there was just little um, little um, I wonder if you if you search for it would it show up there's just little commentaries on different parts of Camino life you know Camino daddies and Camino mammies and um, you know the controversy the different ideas about your feet how to maintain them and the food on the Camino and I don't know it just kind of got me into the posting stuff on the internet because I was on my own so that's why I wear it I wear it all the time Um, I bought it in a little shop in Santiago and I bought my sister a mother of pearl one so she has one and I have one um so then why did i choose to go vegan uh bex and tina asked that um i chose to go vegan in the space of around two hours it was a space that it took me to watch cowspiracy um and i went from eating absolutely everything to eating just plants um i it just I was always really concerned about like especially after the Camino I was really concerned with minimalism and trying to be I went for a whole year um, without using any plastic so I was plastic free for a year and then I tried to go zero waste um, and that was when I was living in Exeter Um, and I was just really concerned and frightened about the future um, and the environment and the damage that we do and I was just, you know, it's all very mainstream now, <laughs> um, you know, bring in your own bags and, uh, but what I found the most difficult thing to buy plastic free was meat and cheese. So I actually 
went off meat and cheese completely. I never was a big fan of milk um, apart from in cereal and then I actually wasn't eating cereal at all uh, because that was really difficult to find um, plastic free. So when I went plastic free it meant that I was eating mostly um, beans, uh, things you can get out of tins, things that you can get out of um, plastic and things that you can get without plastic so there's loads and loads and loads of veg uh, and things that you can buy in bulk. So loads of veg, pasta, um, rice, pulses, lentils, beans, tomatoes um, and I lost loads of weight doing that uh, and it felt really good, felt really healthy um, and then I was in, I was, tra I traveled, I started traveling and this is a long story, sorry, but I started traveling and it was really difficult to go plastic free when I was traveling because you can't find a bulk, there's no bulk food shop in like Thailand, you know. So once I got to Australia then I started thinking about the sustainability of that and how I could manage to do my best to try and just do what I could without, you know, unfortunately not having a kitchen or somewhere to store <laughs> three kilos of pasta or, you know, 10 kg of rice uh, and not cart it around with you in your backpack while you were traveling. Um, so, uh, and then also there's the, there's the concerns about the flights as well. You know, traveling is not very eco-friendly and, and all of that jazz. So I decided the I think once, I think I was having a lot of problems with that for about two months when I was traveling around Southeast Asia and then I got to Australia and I started looking into it a bit more and that's when I came across the Cowspiracy video which was all about the actual cost that goes into uh, making um, meat and making milk. I didn't realize that cows needed to be impregnated every year to create milk. And I didn't realize that the baby cows had to be taken off their mother like within a week or two weeks so we could drink the milk. And then what happens to the baby cows? If they're girls, they get to grow up and be forcibly impregnated every year to give milk and have their babies taken away. And if they're boys, they get sent off to the veal farms in Europe. In Ireland, that's what happens. So it's kind of gross. Anyway, I didn't know any of this stuff. And I literally, once I was like down the rabbit hole, I was like, oh my goodness. And luckily in Australia, it was really easy to be vegan. There was loads of options. Everyone was really into it. Um, there was lots about like sustainability and local food but that's easy when you live in Australia because everything grows in Australia because it's really hot <laughs> and there's like lots of different um, uh, temperatures or temperate zones what are they called uh, lots of different climates you know so you've got tropical climates in Queensland and then you've got like the desert environments and really hot reliable weather like too hot now at the moment and then you've got like the sheep and the the kind of more temperate zones down in Victoria and South Australia so it's really easy to get locally grown like avocados everywhere in Australia because they actually grow in Australia whereas in Ireland avocados are not very sustainable or eco because you have to ship them in from bloody Spain or California or somewhere. Uh, same with almonds like you can grow almonds in Australia but you can't grow them in Ireland so I don't drink I don't eat almonds unless they're like in a fancy muesli <laughs> but I don't like go out of my way to I don't drink almond milk I don't you know I'll, I'll have I'll try and do like local stuff, I, I actually hate the texture of avocado, so I don't eat avocado. Um, I don't eat quinoa either because of the social kind of aspects of um, quinoa that the, uh, it's a bit, a bit of a mess. Have a look at it yourself and make up your own mind. I'm not telling anybody to do what I do. I'm just telling you because people have asked me and a couple of people asked me, so. So that's why I chose to go vegan. Um, the amount of land needed to produce the amount of protein that people are obsessed with is something like 20 times less than if you just eat a plate of beans rather than eating a plate of meat. It's the same protein, 
you get more roughage, more vitamins, more nutrients from beans than you do from meat. And um, yeah. Yeah. I was like, why would I make it go through an intestinal tract first and then put it in my mouth? It's a bit gross. <laughs> if you think about it, <laughs> it's a bit gross. Um, but yeah, so big fan of beans, big fan of a tin of beans and rice and vegetables. And yeah, I went through lots of different phases. Now, sometimes I feel like, obviously, like you can't be perfect, but sure, I try. So like the other night I had to have an egg sandwich inside work because there was no more falafel wraps. I was ravenous and I had to eat it because I needed to continue and I didn't prepare because I'm a bad preparation person. So, um, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up, but I try, I try for most of the time. 90% of the time I do my best and that's as good as I can do. So then, um, now we go into kind of Christmassy stuff. Um, some of my famous, fa my famous family tradition, but some of my favorite family traditions, um, include watching my dad go for a swim in the river, which he goes for a swim every day, but I like to go down and just be like, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I, I try it sometimes, but then I also never make it on Christmas day. We also like to, um, go for a walk on the railway tracks because Christmas day is the only day in Ireland that the trains don't run. So they're safe to run. And it's really interesting seeing the, it's like, it's quite, it's like a mystery. You know, you can be like looking at things from the other side. Um, and yeah, to be honest, we don't have many traditions because both my mum and me grew up working Christmas a lot. My mum, obviously, when I was young, I wasn't working, but like when I wasn't, you know, when I started working, uh, my first job was working in a nursing home. And then I worked inside in the hospital. And then I moved to the UK, but I was able to come home every um, holiday because I was a student for four years. So I came home and I worked Christmas every time because it was like double pay so yeah you were definitely working Christmas day so I think I must have worked eight or nine Christmases on the trot um but like so we don't have any solid Christmas traditions really we just try and get together and we eat food mum always makes um prawn cocktail uh a little bit of turkey and ham uh, potatoes, Brussels sprouts, mash, roast potatoes, carrots, just really tr traditional kind of Irish dinner. We don't have um, Irish, well, my Irish Christmas dinner didn't have any um, bread sauce. That's an English thing. I don't get it. And we don't have any, I don't know, I think Yorkshire puddings or something. They put Yorkshire puddings in everything. They love batter and bread with their meals in the UK, in England anyway mad for it lads your carbs are in the potatoes anyway whatever you do you i don't care <laughs> and then there's plum pudding which you set on fire and then oh a yule log my sister likes to make a yule log so um yeah we don't like i said we don't really have s too many christmas traditions but it's nice to um we might, and James is so into Christmas. <laughs> In case you haven't guessed, he's so into Christmas. So no doubt we'll be having Christmas um, traditions, um, which will be very important and, and very vital and he'll get very offended when I forget them every single year. But I feel like that's our dynamic, which is fine. Um, <laughs> and then um, a lot of people had questions about James. So James, is a um he's a regional manager so he works um, all around munster he works in a lot of different uh, stores all around he's a regional regional sales and development manager i think i think that's his type i don't know anyway he's always on the road he's always driving he's down in cork tonight i told you all about that but yeah he's in charge of a big team of people and um a lot of computer work a lot of people work and he's really good at it so I'm proud of him. <laughs> um, 
how did James and I meet? Um, James was on um, line on online dating for 10 days and I was on online dating for seven years. And um, yeah, he messaged me because he saw I was tall and I think I was the only sane one that called him back. I'm not sure. I was just really interested because he didn't just get, say, hey, sexy in a message. And I was like, oh, a man who knows more words. And he was just really funny, obviously. Like you're seeing him now, like he's just really funny. Some people are saying like, oh, he's so animated. And I'm like, yeah, well, you have to get in the mood. <laughs> get him in the mood. If you stick a camera in his face, he's not going to be in the mood. But the camera's so on at the moment all the time. So you're catching little glimpses. But um, yeah, he was really funny. Um, and that's what got me. Yep. It was really cute. I'm not going to tell you the story of our first date. Because my mom will get really mad. Because I'm sure it wasn't safe. <laughs> I'm such a fool. I'm too trusting. Anyway, it worked out okay. He didn't kill me. Hey, yay. Good plan. He actually, on his first date, he helped me move from my old flat to my new flat. And I'm like, this is super safe. This stranger now knows where I used to live and now where I do live. But he got in a car and it wasn't taxed or registered with me just to move. It was only a, just a month, just, just around the corner. I just needed, to, it was, it was like a, it was fine. And it's fine. It's all fine. It was very dangerous. But you know, it paid off. Yes. I got the ring. <laughs> um, how, and then there's a couple of questions. Oh, how old is Mr. Beans? Mr. Beans is two years old. He's two years old. Is that right? I think he's two years old. He was born in like early October. We picked him up at 10 weeks in December, um, two years ago. Cause we, we went to Paris. If you remember two Vlogmases ago, so 2017's Vlogmas, you would have seen beans coming into our little family. So, um, yeah. Now, there you go now. That was a long Q and A. 32 minutes, oopsie. But I didn't do anything else except work and weave. So um, yeah, I think I've got another bag or two to go on my weaving. So I'm watching this dreadful program on TV, on Netflix about some country nurse who's got some deep psychological problems. She's moved into the countryside of Colorado or some mountainy pretty place uh, in America. It's always America. They've got all the money to make all those nice films. And then, um, yeah, it's kind of dragging. I'm like, get on with it. <sighs> anyway. Good night, everybody.